Wednesday is once again upon us, my dudes, which means we are not only revisiting Velocity Lake, the theme park I am building in Planet Coaster, but also the specific construction of this ride. That's right, this is part two of two. So if you've not seen the previous episode of Velocity Lake, I guess you've now been spoiled because what you can see here, this entire ride structure is what we built in the previous episode. But if you want to see that get built, then I do suggest going to the link in the description of this video uh, and clicking the link <laughs> to the previous episode so you can see kind of how we got to this point. Or indeed, just click the playlist and watch all the other videos in this series, of which there are six preceding this one, I think. If you, uh, for some reason, this is the first time you've watched this series. Uh, and with that intro aside, welcome back, everyone, to Velocity Lake, in which we finish this uh, rubber dinghy rapids ride. So we've done the bulk of the ride itself. Well, we've finished the ride itself, I should say. We've done the track. We've built the station. But now we need to, first of all, do some curbing. Uh, that is something that uh, has, has been a, has been a staple component of the episodes thus far, is doing those little curbs with the green fence on them around this central little island. Uh, but after that, we can do some fencing for the ride itself. See, one thing I like to do in Planet Coaster, even though it's not necessary, although that being said, a lot of Planet Coaster is not necessary. You could just plop down a bunch of flat rides and call it done. It's all about getting that nice little aesthetic touch. And one of the things I like to do is make sure that guests are completely unable to uh, breach the confines of rides without... You know, I guess it's pretty easy to vault the fences, but you can't just wander into the confines of a roller coaster. Like, for example, a toddler wandering off, uh, attempting to find a way to kill themselves, like all toddlers seem to do, unless under Hawkeye's supervision, uh, just to make sure that that sort of thing can't happen. Like, someone can't accidentally stray too far from the path and wander into a ride. So, a lot of my, all the roller coasters in this park, and indeed all the rides like this one, will have fences going around their perimeter to ensure that this does not happen. And this is the case, obviously, for real life rides as well. I can't think of any ride in real life, to my knowledge, that. Uh, allows people to just wander into its confines. Maybe like the ultimate at Lightwater Valley is a roller coaster that springs to mind that might have this problem just because it's so big. I could talk about that in a second actually. But I, I'm pretty sure for the most part even that coaster probably has means of securing its borders. Uh, and making the guests pay for it. I don't know, some Donald Trump joke is probably in there somewhere, isn't there? Uh, anyway, yes, that's what I'm doing here. Building a fence around the perimeter of this ride, which of course includes the... Uh, lake dip bit here uh, adding this uh, water fence which in hindsight i liked it at the time in hindsight looks a little bit too flimsy i might go back and try and build a more robust structure here but this makes a good placeholder structure at the very least so yeah that's what i'm doing building a fence around the border you know what i was saying about uh light water valleys the ultimate coaster i think that might have been basically it's a really funny ride it's like the second longest roller coaster in the world after I think Steel Dragon in Japan is the... No, Steel Dragon in Japan is the longest. But I'm pretty sure the second longest is the ultimate at Lightwater Valley. But it's not like at an Alton Towers or Disney Park. It's just this family-owned... I'm guessing family-owned because it's very, very small. A uh, farmyard park. It's, t it's a tiny little park aimed at kids. And then it just happens to have the world's longest roller coaster. Obviously, their budget is not really in the same league as proper theme parks. Well, I don't want to call it a not pro proper theme park. But you know what I mean, right? It's not got the same budget as these mega parks like, you know, your Disneyland, your Universal Studios, your Alton Towers, etc. Uh, so the way it, it, it's not really like a normal roller coaster. Ironic, given that it's called the ultimate roller coaster. Well, I guess it's just called the ultimate. But, you know, the implication is there, isn't it? What it is, it's like a wooden roller coaster with like a mine train cart and it goes up this lift hill and then it goes down the first drop and the drop goes all the way down to ground level and then it just stays at ground level. Like it's literally just, it's basically a high speed train ride, like it just chugs along ground level for a bit and then it goes off into some woods and it like follows, it looks like a pretty cool ride, like it follows the actual terrain inside the woods but it's generally built in a fairly flat piece of land, so it doesn't really gain or lose much altitude, just sort of coasts along at a nice high speed, so I guess it's a quite a relaxing ride once you've done the initial drop, and even the initial drop is not exactly too daunting. So it's a ride I thought about visiting, but at the end of the day, I'd only be visiting the park to go on that ride, and really I could probably get the same sort of experience, uh, you know, watching the POV on YouTube. Anyway, as you can see, I was talking about I was doing some fencing for this ride, but now you can see me actually adding some of the scenery, because although I guess the ride could be fun in and of itself just having no scenery, it certainly does make it a bit more exciting having some 
uh, exotic plants as I'm doing here, as well as, you know, that big golden cobra. Cobras, I should say. It's a plural. There are two. Um, I've kind of gone for an adventure slash pirate theme for this thing, as these kinds of rides often, rides often have in real life. I've actually, the actual layout and overall theming of this ride is actually inspired by a real life ride. And I am just opening Google Chrome and I can't seem to find uh, 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 the actual muse for it. Let me give you one second. Ah, I have it. It's a, uh, it's from a, th it's the concept art for a River Rapids ride in Norway's Tussenfred theme park. I'm so sorry to all my Norwegian viewers for butchering your beautiful language just then. Uh, but I'll put a link on screen. This is what the actual ride looks like. So you can kind of see how this one took some inspiration for that. Except, uh, you know, ending up uh, far less exciting looking than the ride it was based on. Anyway, I don't even know if this ride is even real. I've only ever seen it, like, as concept art. I didn't see any articles of it actually being built. I'm guessing it must have been built, because I'm pretty sure it was slated for a 2016 release, or at least, you know, uh, 2016 uh, starting the construction of, and I feel like it wouldn't take three years to build a ride like that. So maybe it exists. If you've ridden on this ride, that would be amazing. Let me know in the comments below if you have, and I might read those comments. Um... And that's that's that that's the muse for this ride. So then it's just a case of thinking of things to fill in the rest of the space. The main thing I want to do is that big sort of loop with the golden cobras and all the little animatronic snakes from the adventure pack, I believe that's those sceneries from. I wanted that little corner as well as having the tunnel with the skull rock over the entrance to it. But other than that, that was like the main things I wanted to do. Then we just had to figure out a way of getting the cars or boats, I should say, back to the station. So I've got this big uh rapids bit of the ride and i just decided to plop some pirate themed huts down just to create some things because even though you'd think i well i guess i would think that these rides would be fairly heavily themed and i guess in places like a disney park or universal studios they are fairly heavily themed but at drayton manors and like alton towers is for example there's not really that much theming if at all along the ride there's the odd crashed car towards the side of it as theming not just someone literally crashing their car inside of it. there's the odd crash car and just sort of speaker here and there but other than that it's just like a, it's just a nice river cruise with the occasional you know rapids <laughs> so that I, I didn't want to go too i didn't want to worry about going not about perhaps going a little bit too light with the scenery even though i think the end the end uh, picture the end picture we have is not too under themed i don't know how do you feel about the theming of this ride i was trying to go for a happy compromise of just looking like nature that was in the area prior to it all being cut down to make way for the park uh, and of course you know imported plants such as you know the palm trees and bamboo to add to the uh, adventurous theming to the ride so um i hope it came out okay i think it came out quite nicely i think in retrospect the only thing i don't like really is as i mentioned earlier that fence that separates the body of water that the boats go into to the rest of the lake i think that could be that could be built to be a little bit more substantial but other than that pretty happy pretty happy with how it came out so i've got this water tower on the hill just here and i try to have like a water jet that came out the spout but the big fat water jet that would you know be an appropriate size for the size of the spout they actual they they they're actually quite short in terms of the amount of water that comes out the only sort of the water effect itself only seems to stretch about two meters before it just sort of stops falling if that makes sense like the actual length of the water effect is only two meters so much much shorter than the height of the well i guess the distance between the end of the spout to the actual river itself so i had to abandon the idea of having a water actual water coming out of that spout but then i put another water tower on that was lower to the ground that would meant that meant we could have a fat water feature coming out of the spout yeah i feel like that was a really difficult sentence to say i hope hope i got that across all right so now we're actually taking a break from editing the ride itself, it seems, and resuming the old chestnut of doing some curbing. Okay, never mind, it's it's gone. I keep up whenever I hear myself, whenever, because obviously I have to watch these videos back. Believe it or not, these videos are actually very, oh, actually, I speak, to, here's a quick POV of the ride. I, I'm not slowing it down just here because I'm going to show it when it's actually finished, but this is a little POV of what we have so far. Looks pretty nifty. I do, I'm pretty sure we should. I'm pretty sure I edited it so that there was a POV at the end of this video. I really hope there is. If not, I'll just use this footage here and just play it back at a normal speed. But all that is to come because now we've actually finished the ride itself. It's time to get to the actual construction of the uh, the entrance the entrance queue building. 
So we'll get to that uh, in now, I guess. <laughs> so I went with a similar architectural style to the station and I guess that little tower that the exit queue descends down and that is kind of like alpine style but ending up looking a little bit japanesey as well i hope you kind of understand what i meant when i said it kind of looks like a pagoda but built in alpine style i think it might be that castle wall foundation it looks very reminiscent of the old japanese foundation walls around their old castles uh, at least the one in Call of Duty 5, World at War, where there's that level <laughs> set in a castle. And, you know, uh, I just remember staring at the loading screen for that map and looking at the picture of the castle. And now I just think of Japanese castles are looking, all looking like that. I mean, I guess it was based on a real Japanese castle, at least the architectural style. So I guess there's merits to that design. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I know what Japanese castles look like mainly because of that fact, the fact that there was a Japanese castle level in World at War and I spent so long looking at the loading screen for it. <laughs> I mean, not that this thing even really looks like a Japanese castle, it just kind of has the same sort of foundational wall. You guys might disagree, you might not even see the pagoda likeness that I seem to see in it. I guess it is kind of weird, a weird likeness. It could just look like a, a alpine-ish wooden building on a brick wall to most people. I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing here, really. Let me know what you guys think of this building. I still don't really know if I'm even going to keep it. I did toy about just toy with the idea of just tearing it all down and building like a temple looking building to suit the adventure theme. I really don't know what I'm doing in this game, and <laughs> honestly. So, you know, I'm very much open to criticism for the design of this building. If you have any feedback or any suggestions for improvements, again, leave them below and I will look at the comments when this video gets uploaded, which for me will be in like a few weeks time because I'm, I'm, I am I'm I have ended up just sort of making like a, bulk, a load of bulk commentaries. I'm generally doing one commentary a day at the moment because it's summer's coming up. I've got a lot of stuff over summer. I mean, summer might even be over for you guys. I don't know. It might, but could well be. Um, summer's coming up for me, and I've got a lot of commitments, and it's very hard for me to make a one Kerbal video a week as it is. Planet Goes on top of that just adds a lot. That's like a whole evening. Well, no, it's, it's like a few hours, but then it puts my computer out of use for a whole evening because rendering takes a long time for these videos because the playback speed is so fast, and I'm doing a lot of color correction for the footage as well, so... It, although it only takes a couple of hours to make the video, it does kind of put the PC out of use for an evening. Kerbal videos are okay. I can still work on Kerbal videos because I've got a laptop that I can create crafts on and plan out missions. But, you know, it's still a bit a bit of a commitment that I might not be able to afford later on in the summer when I've got a lot more plans on. So I'm just trying to do as many bulk commentaries as I can now just to free up the schedule, just to guarantee. I mean, I'd probably be fine. I'd probably be fine doing commentaries over the summer so I can get them the commentaries fresh and uh, you know fresh and up to date when they come out but I don't want to take that risk. I want to make sure that the video is coming out every Wednesday like clockwork without skipping a beat. So for me keeping things topical uh, the Ghostbusters DLC just came out and Frontier actually got in touch with me and sent me early access codes but I didn't see the email until the DLC came out so sorry about that Frontier but now I'm in now I'm in now I'm in there like uh, in a circle of content creators so I can get fresh hot takes on new content for Planet Zoo Planet Coaster Jurassic World Evolution I'm pretty sure that Planet Coaster is now sort of entering retirement in terms of its support like it's going to be supported from a superficial level only like there's not going to be any more actively worked on packs to my knowledge based on the rumors that i've heard but these rumors are coming from sources that have generally been pretty accurate with things like leaks like the ghostbusters dlc was leaked by the same sources, and it was subsequently confirmed by frontier you know when the dlc was actually officially announced so I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in the reliability of this source and so planet coast is probably going to be winding down so it's a shame there's a lot of things i would have liked them to add such as you know the water parks feature was a big one that people asked for i guess zoos and wildlife areas were another thing that was asked for but now I guess we've got Planet Zoo coming out soon. As you know, Frontier has registered trademarks for a bunch of other games like Planet Prison, Planet Hospital. I can't remember what they are. I mean, I know a lot of it's going to be there just to uh, maintain protection of their trademark and they don't actually have any intention. They don't actually have any intention of releasing half those games. But it does pose the question, like, what if, like, in 10 years' time, we've got Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster, Planet Water Park, Planet uh, Golf Course, Planet Hotel etc etc that eventually all the forces all of the separate films in the cinematic universe almost come together into planet planet where we just get one big thing where we can build everything 
It's like Endgame and Infinity War. They all come together and we can build a theme park with, you know, zoos and water parks and a prison for all of our guests that like to steal things. It all comes together. That would be a really cool thing to do. Although I guess by that point, you know, the end, the games would have been fairly spaced apart. So there'd be quite a bit of graphical disparity between the releases. And I guess it might not make a lot of money, financial sense to just suddenly conglomerate all of those franchises when you could just make sequels to all the separate games and make more money. I don't know. I mean, Frontiers always come across as a bit more of a charming company to me. Like, they don't seem entirely profit-driven. Like, yeah, duh, they're a company. They're going to be profit-driven. But they seem to care a bit more about their, you know, consumer practices and actually getting customer you know, enthusiasm for their products. Like, I, to my knowledge, at least, none of their games have microtransactions or anything. Yes, they have DLC, but I guess DLC is fair to charge for that if it's being actively worked on following release. It's only launch day DLC that I have a contention to. So this is the uh, the interior of this queue line. I don't know if I like it very much. It's very just bare bones, like, just ticks all of the bare essential boxes, but then it doesn't really do much else like there's no theming to the interior and it is very 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 simplistic so maybe i should go back and alter it but honestly i'm kind of I'm just getting bored it's just <laughs> it, this this ride is probably the longest i have and ever will spend in terms of in, in terms of time investment on station buildings i was just bored of working on this one ride i just wanted to move on with my life so i probably won't go back and revise any of this but part of me thinks that i might in the future if uh, you know my I don't know, perfectionist inside me gets the better of me and I want to go back and fix everything. I say that I, I feel like I may have spent longer on the station building for the BNM launched coaster, which we'll be getting to fairly soon. I don't know how many episodes away it is. I haven't got around to editing that. I've edited a lot of the episodes together and now I'm just going through day on day doing a commentary for each episode whilst I've got nothing on this week, because this week, I guess you guys will know, hopefully, if it went ahead, this week I've done my Audible, my first ever of many of maybe <laughs> uh, Orbit Audible integrations in my videos, and so I had to get the video made very, very early in the week, so I had to work very, very hard on Monday and Tuesday to get the video together just so the brand could uh, revise my video, uh, ask for any edits and make sure it was all okay. And they did ask for edits twice, so that was fun. Uh, but because I had to get all the Kerbal video done early on in the week, suddenly I get to Wednesday, my dudes, and I'm like, ah, oh, I've now got nothing to do for the rest of the week. So rather than, you know, dedicate that to enriching my life and, you know, spending time doing pleasure activities, I decided let's just work on more videos. So I, I've just dedicated that to getting lots and lots of Planet Coaster content made so that I can spend more time dedicated to Kerbal videos when I get around to doing them. So in a way, everyone wins. You know, Planet Coaster guys get their Planet Coaster fix and Kerbal guys who, you know, whose content demands a lot more attention from myself, they get their fix week on week as well. So great things ahead for this channel, hopefully. Uh, unless, you know... Uh, Unless the heat death of the universe occurs prematurely and we all die, so then it doesn't really matter anyway. Either way, the Planet Coaster content is coming, guys. It's coming. Wednesdays will always and forever be Planet Coaster on this channel until Planet Coaster phases out, which that's how I got onto this topic in the first place, wasn't it? That I'm now in the inside group of Frontiers. So I'm getting exclusive scoops on games. So maybe they'll give me a key for Planet Zoo so I can do some Planet Zoo videos. Honestly, I'm not that fussed about Planet Zoo. Like, I'll give it a look. It could be really good. But for me, growing up, I really I played a lot of SimCity and Train Simulator. It wasn't called Train Simulator. It was like some knockoff of it. I think it was like just trains with a Z, something like that, and a few others. Like, But the ones that really captured my imagination were, first of all, Theme Park World. I think it was also released as Sim Theme Park in some regions. Mine was called Theme Park World. It was developed by Bullfrog and Maxis. And uh, then subsequently being really captured by, first of all, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, and then Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. I got really into the theme park genre more than anything else, really. So I never really played any other Tycoon games once I got into Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. I was satisfied. So you can imagine how hyped I was when I heard that Parkitect and uh, Planet Coaster were coming out, particularly Planet Coaster. And since then, I've never really felt inclined to go back to any other Tycoon games. But maybe Planet Zoo, which, you know, Zoo Simulators is not Zoo Simulator. Zoo Tycoon-esque games never, were never really a thing that I was too bothered about. But maybe Frontier will work their magic and I'll be suddenly interested. But I guess, unlike theme parks, I've never really visited zoo zoos and I've never really felt inclined to visit a zoo. I guess almost also from the moral standpoint of zoos. Like, I know zoos do a lot of good conservation work, but also it does almost feel like you are just having animals captured just for the uh, just for the entertainment of people 
So I don't know. Maybe that's completely inaccurate. I really like to see an aquarium game as well, though I admit that aquarium aquariums are far more limited in scope. But that's why I got super into Mega Aquarium. I did stop the uh, playthrough series because it didn't get... A lot of people didn't like it. I know it got it got relatively good feedback, but the format I went with, people didn't seem to the, what the reti- the viewer retention time wasn't great, so I abandoned that series. But I did still carry on playing the game, so and I really enjoyed playing Mega Aquarium. So maybe an aquarium, uh, maybe aquariums are the next game. I don't know. That was another thing I would have liked to have seen in Planet Coaster is maybe an aquarium edition, a bit like the aquariums in Roller Coaster Tycoon Three. Like it's nothing major. It's just a flat ride that's like customizable. But, you know, it's a thing that it's kind of sad we'll never get, but maybe that means that they're working on Planet Coaster 2. That would be a nice thing to work on, because Planet Coaster 1, although there's not much to be improved upon, there's a lot of quality of life features I feel are missing. Like, the roller coaster track editor is not that great. Weather would be nice. And just an overall graphic improvement, and I guess a further engine optimization would be great. So yeah, I, I am worried, obviously, me doing commentaries like this, I'm worried that I might have already talked about all this stuff. Like, as I'm saying this, I feel like I have already talked about this, but I don't recall specifically doing it for a video. So hopefully I'm just getting deja vu uh, and I've not been in this place before. But maybe this has been really boring for you guys, not only because it's a Matt Lown commentary and that goes without saying, um, but also the fact that I haven't just completely just said the exact same things I did in the previous commentary. Anyway, that's pretty much the queue uh, done. Now just to add some shrubbery. And also, actually, this is one thing I forgot to mention uh, because it hasn't happened yet. But a lot of these rubber dinghy rapids rides in real life have these drier booths outside the exits just because you can often get wet on these rides. Funnily enough, right, a water ride, you might get wet. So a lot of these places have these, uh, sh- these, bo- these booths where you can just put a pound in or whatever currency of the country you're in, put some money in, and it just dries you really quickly. And you that's it that's that that's that's, that's that's what i'm building here if you have ever seen these things in real life or some swimming pools i think some fancier swimming pools have these things so you must you hopefully you'll recognize it from somewhere if you've ever been to a theme park or fancy swimming pool so thought i'd put a couple of these booths outside just to add that extra little touch of realism um uh, to the ride and again, I'm using the Archer animatronic. Obviously, he's only there temporarily, but the Archer, everyone seems to agree, is like the best uh, size to build things to scale when you haven't got peeps around to build the scale correctly to. He's like the most similar to a normal guest's size like because he's standing quite high up. So he's pretty much the tallest any guest will be. So he's quite a good one to uh, use as a reference when constructing things. And then, of course, we can add some more curbing. Well, I was going to... In fact, I started talking about this and then I went on to massive tangent for like 15 minutes. But I was saying like whenever I hear myself say the word curbing, because obviously I play these videos back just to make sure that everything worked in terms of the editing. Whenever I say curbing, when I go back, I always think I'm like about to say curbing because I say curbing so often in my KSP videos. And when I hear myself say the word curbing, it just sounds wrong. It just sounds weird. And I know in the most recent episode, which is the, as in the most recent episode to be released, which for me is the Grand Carousel episode, some, a couple of people, a couple of people wrote in the comments, is this curbing space program? Super lame joke, I know, but I guess they must have made the connection that curbing sounds like curbin as well. I guess that's all I had to say about that really. I guess it's not even that interesting. Speaking of things that uh, might be more interesting, next week will be the construction of this park's second roller coaster. I know you guys seem to like it when I build roller coasters, funnily enough. So you've got that to look forward to. It's going to be, well, I won't say anything actually. I'll say it's a steel roller coaster and it's a themed roller coaster as well. It's going to be the first ride in this park to actually have dedicated scenery theming rather than just, you know, generic alpine theming or or a generic alpine theming with a hint of Japanese flair, which is what this one unintentionally seems translated. If if you guys even agree with me, I mean, you might disagree, and in which case I'd be quite happy, actually, to all things considered. But to me, I just can't look at this and not see a, flair, a, little, a little touch, a little touch of Japanese flair. But I, I guess there are worse flares you could have, you know, in terms of architecture. Japanese architecture is a fairly nice thing to behold so i guess you could do worse than having japanese inspiration in rides but yeah the last thing to do is i like to just set the time of day to be night time just so i can do some lighting and make sure that the park is all well illuminated and then for the centerpiece of this little plaza here i just put the tall lampposts from the vintage pack just because you know makes a fairly easy and simple 
feature to uh, fill out plazas. And then I thought these, like, also from the vintage pack, those bulbous uh, lampposts would look nice sunk into the planters, although that's long gone now. Now we're working on the suspension bridge again. I guess I'm kind of, it's now quite difficult to me, for me to talk over the footage because I'm doing a lot of uh, finishing up around various bits of the park. So effectively just doing lots of lighting at this point, I thought it'd be a nice thing to just shoehorn onto the end of this video because it doesn't really work as its own standalone video because it would be boring. But it's also not a great thing to start a video with because it might lose some people's attention. So I guess with that, we'll just stop doing this and cut to a POV of the rubber dinghy rapids ride itself. Now, one thing I will mention before I be quiet is that um, I realized I didn't have any footage with audio uh, of the ride built at the time. So this is actually taken in the present day. I just deleted all the surrounding rides. So you can't get spoiled. But just in case you see any scenery that doesn't seem to have, it doesn't seem to ex have existed in the time lapse you just watched, that's why. And that pretty much wraps up this ride. We're coming to the end of it now. Just that conveyor belt lift to go. So may as well end the video here. I'll whack an end screen up. And there are some videos on it. The one on the left is a link to the full Velocity Lake playlist. And the one on the right was just recommended to you by YouTube's recommendation algorithm. There's also a link to Patreon and to subscribe if you would like to. As well as in the description there are links to Twitter, Discord and Instagram. And my merchandise. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.